Alright, today I'm going to be teaching you how to uh, edit your save file in such ways to make your cards have 9999 attack, how to get certain achievements like uh, 666 or the Ouroboros one. We'll be going over the basics, but first what, you'll ev what everyone will need to do if you haven't made a save file already. To alter your save file, you're going to have to go through this tutorial section. Um, I'll show the fastest way to do that, but it's really only going to come down to just, I mean, following the tutorial. There's two ways you can do it. Both ways result in the same speed, but you're just going to put the squirrel down. You're going to sack. There's going to be the bell. You're going to click right where I was. Coyote is going to spawn in front of the stoat. He's going to attack the stoat. And then it'll be your turn again. So, put your cursor somewhere in the fourth region, right? We'll say on that paw print, right? Yeah, yeah. So, if you put your finger, your cursor on this paw print and spam click, you'll be able to instantly grab a squirrel. Um,. What I shouldn't have done there to save time is I shouldn't have put down the squirrel because he has a line of dialogue that tells you you can play a squirrel. So it stalls you a little bit longer. Then you sack the two squirrels and you play. So now this is where I'll be showing you some things with save file editing. Okay. So our save file was now created six seconds ago. So, first, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open your file explorer. Um, you're going to want to find inscription. In this case, it's on my hard drive, on Steam libraries, and Steam apps, and common, and then inscription. Once you do that, I probably recommend saving it, doing whatever you need to to get quick access to it. Because when you change this, you're going to need to change it a lot. So I put it over here, you see. So, now you see your save file. We're going to go into the save file. And I'll go through it. And I'll say certain things and what they will do. So to start off with, this top section doesn't matter. It's only for the game to refer to itself and the ID number. ID number won't matter either. So, the only things that matter in this section, in this first section, is random seed. What well, random seed is, uh, each time you play, uh, your run's not going to be the same every time. So, the game generates a random seed. So, what this can affect is the spawn of cards and the position of enemies. The easiest example is that, um, and the first Grizzly Rush in the tutorial... You, uh, if you beat all the fights without dying, which most people do die, you will get a grizzly rush. The position where the grizzly, where the first grizzly will spawn and where the first sparrow will spawn is dependent on your spawn or your seed. My bad. Next, current seed. Doesn't really matter. It's just what part of the game you're in. So, this section doesn't matter it's just something the game refers to dialogue doesn't matter progression data doesn't matter just stores information land mechanics doesn't matter and cards doesn't matter well this one may matter a little bit more because you can only have so many cards as you have learned well not learned cards but you can only have as many cards as you have obtained consumables etc etc so the first and most important thing when editing your save file is your current run. Your current run introduces which cards you have in your type and oh, here's how you would change how many um, cards you can obtain. You would change your R length uh, to however many cards you have. So you see we have four cards here and it was set to R length four. You can only have four cards. But if you alter the R length and you put comma and then however the instance of the game refers to 
the car does. One example would be like Ant Queen. And then copy and paste this over. Boop. And make sure your spacing is the same. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now going to save this and I'll just use this as an example. When I boot up the game now, you don't have to fully boot up the game. You just have to move. Now you see we have three ant, ant queens, right? Uh, you'll have to figure out what the card instances are referred to as. Like elk fawn is not referred to as elk fawn in the game. It's referred to as elk cub. You're gonna need to know the capitalization of them, etc. But if you do this a lot, you'll figure it out. All right, so always return because then when you boot it up, your save will, the stuff you changed will save. You don't have to exit out of the game entirely. You just have to go back to the main screen. So back to where we were. So next, boon IDs, doesn't matter. Uh, I think this refers to what boons you have for the last boss. But you honestly don't need boons. I could, maybe if you wanted to like experiment with something and you wanted the, uh, what do you call it, magpie's eye boon, you would do this. But in this instance, we're not going to go over it. We're just going to ignore it. Just know you can change it to have what boons you want, right? Card ID mods, doesn't matter. It's just something that the game refers to so it can load up this so now we're in the section of where your games are or where your cards are referred to as in here right this is your cards you will also need to change your card length so that way even though you have the seven cards right that I just showed you how to add they're not going to be in your card instance, so you won't be able to change the stats. So I just booted it up, changed the length to 7. Now the Ant Queen should be included in here. They're not. Okay. Doesn't matter all that much. I'll just show you this example. So what this basically does is it refers to your cards and your abilities. So. Um, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to show you what sacrificing does to a card and or campfires, right? So we'll just continue through this section of the game normally and we'll skip through, right? All right. Now that this fight is over, we have one more card choice. We're just going to choose a card. It doesn't really matter. And... I'm going to show you how sacrificing plays into your cards. This will be how you do anything card related. So, what's going to happen here is Stoat's gonna get a sacrifice, right? He's gonna get the ability of flight. So, now I'll show you what changed. So, I'm gonna open up the save file, right? We'll scroll down, and you see, Stout used to only have this, and it was closed. Now, since we sacrificed, the game pulls all of this extra information that it needs. Certain things that you may notice off the bat is name replacement. This is for death cards. Most of the time, it's not going to change, but you can change Stout's name. However, if you haven't realized, you can change the attack and HP. Uh... You can do 999, 999, etc. It'll be most likely how I got the picture for this thumbnail, right? So, next is abilities, right? Abilities uh, are what they sound. They're just the ability that Stoat has. In this case, 19 refers to the flight ability. If you want to know what ability numbers are, the best example I can give you is the abilities relate to which section number they are in here. So ability 19, say you wanted, I don't know, um, touch of death. 
number four. You put that in, right? So you can change this ability to be whatever you want. I'm not going to do it now, but what I'll show you is if you want more than one ability, what you will have to do is change the R length in this section to two, three, however many you want, right? So in this case, I'll just do two. You have to put the comma, keep your space incorrect, and we'll do four, right? Okay, so now when I close out the game, Stoat will have both touch of, touch of death and flight. You can do this with any ability, etc. But see, Stoat has touch of death and flight. Got it. Okay. Another thing is, I'll just show you just to make it easier. Stoat, we'll just give him 999. Uh, it does not give him 999 attack and health. It gives him 999 plus attack and plus 999 HP. So he may have a thousand, etc. So if you want to get exact numbers, you got to figure out the base details of the card first and then add the adjustment accordingly. Blood cost, bone cost, energy cost. Energy cost will only be referred to in the third part of the game. I'll talk about it a little, but I won't go in depth into the third part of the game. At least, not in this video. If people want to know more about it, I'll go into the third part. But, so, bone cost, as a, very apparent. Uh, if a car costs bones, and say it costed two bones, and you wanted the card to be free, you would just put negative two, it will no longer cost anything, and it will be free. Uh... In this case, Stoat cost one blood normally, so we'll put in minus one, and Stoat will now be free. Gem cost, this is part of the third game, same as Gemify, right? This section, uh, it just explains how the sacrifice was obtained, so, or how the abilities were obtained. So, if you want them all to just be innate to the card, you put false, if the, really the only reason you would do this is for style, but I'll just save this and give you an example of it, right? So Stoat should no longer have like the glowing eyes. He just has the abilities innately, and he doesn't have the enhanced eyes thing, right? Okay. Takes care of that. So now we'll move on to the next section. So you're probably wondering... Okay, great and all, but I need a sacrifice to be able to do this on the card initially. No, you really don't. All you need to do is, you would probably want to get one sacrifice so you can get the same code, but from here, you're just going to copy all the way down to here. When you do this, you have now copied the code, and you will remove this section right here and then paste in the code, and it'll give the wolf the same abilities. In this case, since wolf costs two, we'll just change the blood cost to two, etc. And you can go down the list and do this more, but I'm not gonna do that. You can do it though. You would just copy the section of all required information relating to that. So totems just refers to totems. I'm gonna assume um, when you get totems, you can change the top and bottom depending on what the number is for, etc. We're not gonna. We may talk about it, but we're most likely not. Next thing, consumables. This refers to the actual consumables you have on your hand. So, if you want to change which items you have, you would just put this in. Put in, I don't know. Um, what's like an obvious one, pliers, right? Say I wanted three pliers, right? And then, right, you put it in, etc. I don't know if you can have more than three if you change the R length. You may crash your game. I'm not gonna test it in this case, but I'll show you that pliers were adjusted.
So now rather than having two squirrels in a bottle, we'll have three pliers to our right when I boot up the game. Sometimes the game takes a while to boot. I may have crashed the game. This is something you may realize when you're doing this. There's a lot of trial and error to these things. So what most likely happened is I either misspelled pliers or didn't put the comma. So we'll scroll down to consumables. Remember, you can do control F if you're looking for something specific. Yeah, see right here, didn't put the end quotation. So the game will crash. So we're going to close out the game. And we should be able to boot it up now. And when we start it, we'll have three pliers. This is something that you have to get used to. If you know coding already, uh, in this case, I think this is specifically Java, or it's most close to Java because of its case sensitivity. Uh, you would know that these things matter. See, we have three pliers, etc. So now we'll go down to the next important thing. As you see, I may skip some things. Currency. This refers to this number right here. This is what you use to um, give to the trader so you can get pelts. So you can make a 999, etc. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that if you want. Player lives, how many lives you have at the time, can change it probably up to three. I don't know if you could change it more, but you can test and see. I would probably not recommend changing it any more than three, but your choice. Max player lives, the total amount of lives. So you would have four lives, and so you had two player lives, you lost two of your lives. So you only have two left. Uh, difficulty modifier. Don't know what it does, but it's not important. Neither is this. So I state, if you want to uh, not have to do the bosses or die a few times because you want to test something, you can change your I state. I think it is two because I think the first I. We'll see. When I boot it up, okay, wrong I state. So I state three is what we're looking for then. Example, you can type in I, boom, save yourself some time. It may also be locked behind certain things right now. Yeah, because we aren't even in the section where we got eyes. So, but you would change, you would be able to change your eye state, so that once you're able to get up, you would be able to change your eye state. Okay. I don't remember what it is completely, but we'll just change it to zero. Run intro complete doesn't really matter. Leshy boss fight. This is for the last phase of the boss of Leshy or the end of part one. Uh, however, if you set this equal to true, it'll crash your game because I made a previous video showing how to activate what we thought at the time was the secret boss. Skull teeth refers to, you know how sometimes there's a skull and there's teeth. If you've died more than once, you would know what I'm talking about. This is how many teeth are in that skull. Survivor's dead. Um... When you set this equal to true, I believe you can increment whatever it is, depending on if it's attack, you can get four more attack on the card, or if it's HP, you can get more HP. Basically, there's no chance of losing your card from the survivors. You can do this innately in the game by using ringworm and getting them to eat ringworm, or adder, even. But this has to be done later on. It can't be done initially. If you change it, it can be, but I don't think it'll do anything. So all this is referring to, every single one of these, is just talking about the position on your map, etc. Nothing important here. If you want to look at it while I'm scrolling through, go ahead, but it's literally just the map and all the corresponding things to the map. 
right? So, I'll scroll down to the next thing. Past runs, doesn't matter. Death card modifiers. This is for the innate death cards, not your death card. So, Reginald, you may have seen him. You can change his stats. I don't know why you would. But the game needs to keep it somewhere, so it keeps it here. You could also copy and paste the information that you would want from a... Uh, to give abilities to cards from here and then do it like that. So next, wall candle progress. This is, uh, I believe it refers to uh, when you blow out the candle. Uh, so I would set it equal to three and I would assume you would get greater smoke when you started the prospector fight. But since this is the first fight in the game, you're always going to go in there without having a smoke. Oil painting state. Uh, this probably just refers to the oil painting, etc, etc. Uh, Ord 1 is... Yeah. Either way. If you want to mess around with the puzzle stuff, it's in this setting. After wall candle information, right? So you do control F, wall candles, and you would find all the information for puzzles. This is the slider state, track state, just refers to the slider puzzle, right? And it's used so it can, well, put objects there. Doesn't really matter. You should probably, you can skip through this. Collection, doesn't matter. Card views, doesn't matter. Currency, etc. None of this so far matters. So. This is referring to part two of the game, by the way. We're now at section two. So, this is for packs opened. It's, uh, where was it? Where was this information? This is your currency in the second part of the game. I don't know why. Oh, so you can buy more packs. So you would change that if you wanted to get more packs in the second part of the game. How many packs you opened, etc., etc. right? All this information refers to the second part of the game, but I'm assuming you're not looking for that. Nature temple, yada yada, wizard temple part. Tech temple, stoats section. Part three, right? This is going to be your card information, what cards you start with at the beginning, and same thing as before, you can adjust their abilities here if you put in the same information. And you can change their energy cost by adjusting the energy cost. Right? Rig draws, it's just something the game does innately. Currency, the third the third part of the game's currency, so you can buy more things, you can change it. Your lives, how many lives you can have maximum. Etc. Etc. Right. So, this information, this grimoire data, or grimora, is when you fight grimora near the end of the game. This is what deck you will be given. You can change the cards if you want. I don't know why you would, but if you want to, go ahead. And then, lastly, the most. You would also be able to change the abilities the card has if you change the R count and the R length to one. You have if you are going to change the card, right? You have to change the R length to one. Otherwise, nothing will happen, even if you input the information. Okay. Lastly, Ouroboros deaths. Ouroboros deaths, right? This refer. It's a tally counter. So if it's at zero, or Boris will be a one one. If you make it twenty one, he'll be at twenty two twenty two, etc. It's just an incrementer. Unlocked achievements doesn't matter. So uh, that's basically everything that the game has in the save files. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, ask. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them because this is relatively complex. Uh, changing your 
save file stuff is never easy and can result to crashing. Uh, if you do something in which your game is just completely unsavable, right? We'll just save this for instance. What you would, you could do two things. You could reset from the game manually, push the reset, or you can just delete your save file and your save file backup, which I'll do in this case. Close out of the game. You have to close out of the game for this section if you are going to reset your data. And then the game would boot up. You wouldn't have any data at all. And that would be that. Game's taking a little bit to boot. But uh, if you enjoyed the video, like it. If you enjoyed commentary, I would say subscribe. But your decision, honestly, it's not that much of my ordeal what you do but if you have if you do have any questions like do comment because you're just gonna get lost if no one answers them okay. and uh, figure out what's on this thing. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, goodbye and good luck with edit editing your safe file